Recording is underway. This is going to be TMS. That's fine. TMS replace. Yes. Okay. We are recording, and now it begins. <clears throat> After I count it down, I have allergies, and I'm all phlegmy as a result. Oh. <clears throat> all right. Here we go. It begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, that guy shouldn't get free anything. Your fruit really stinks. Arizona is now a ninja state again. The virus made me do it. Who left the hater open? Sorry, who left the hatch open? <laughs> <laughs> Call now and Trek Nerd and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. Hello, everybody. I'm having a good day. I'm having a fun day. I don't know why I keep saying that. I don't know why. It's just something I say all the time. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. By the power of Grayskull, this is The Morning Stream. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the morning stream. It is Tuesday, Monday, Monday, the May 13th, 2019. Monday, the May 13th. That's right. We're almost midway yes. through the month, which is crazy. Yes. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the show. We uh, missed you. We weren't here Friday with our PM edition, so uh, it feels like it's been a while, even though it really hasn't, because the show's daily and it's a lot of content, so what are you complaining about? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you had that entire conversation <laughs> with them in, uh, in in your head almost. Yeah, like, kind of, yeah. Here, so. I'll take care of all this. You be the you and I'll be the me and I'm just going to go both parts real quick. Yeah, I'll just do both bits. Uh, but we're back and uh, it's Scott and it's Brian and we're here. We got things to do, stuff to talk about. Had a weekend. Uh, I got away, as you know, for Mother's Day with the, with the wife and uh, did a little bit of I don't know, semi-staycation because it was just downtown. But um, we love doing that because, you know, downtown they got cool little restaurants and things that we never get around to very often. And so it's just like a nice little getaway. And so we did that. And it was lovely. Had a great time. Went with some friends this time. Uh, Darren and Ruth Ann. They're awesome. And uh, hung out with them a lot. Yeah, they were great. And uh, while I was gone, I learned who my least favorite personality type is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'd like to share today on the show... Tell me, yes. Scott's Boy. least favorite personality type. And it feels like we've had so many to choose from. I mean, there is the, the you know, the doth protest too much type. There's mm -hmm. the... Um, there's the, hey, bro, like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for following my YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, those guys. Yeah. It uh, feels like we've got a lot a lot to choose from, so I can't wait to, to hear <laughs> who well, we've got. Surely there's some crossover here. There's probably yeah. multiples in this probably. one. Probably, yes. Um, I ran into this, and I just just about went over and lost it and, like, chewed the guy out. But uh, wow. imagine it, it's, uh, it's a Friday. Let's see. Was this, no, this was Saturday night at about 1030 at night, and we were waiting for this. It's a long story, but we were getting cookies delivered. Uh, anyway, this is a weird thing where they bring you cookies. Kim wanted to try it out. <laughs> we're getting cookies delivered. Yeah, and we're at the hotel in the in the lobby, and they have lots of loungy space in Little America. It's a beautiful hotel. Been there for ages. It's right across oh, the street yeah. from the Grand America, which is like a five star hotel that presidents stay in. Um, except I don't think they let Trump come back because he left the sheets all orange. That was kind of weird. Oh, weird. Yeah. Uh, well, they weren't uh, yellow and pea stained? No, it's just orange, like a weird, almost like makeup, almost. It was weird. <laughs> uh -huh. So they won't let them in there anymore. But uh, anyway, normally, that's where like heads of state come or, you know, with some big visit to the, to the city, you'll have that place. But we're in a thing across the street. It's a little more affordable and a, and a nice uh, little joint. So we're in there. We're in the front area. Lots of lounge space. Oh, I also learned something, Brian. It's a Vegas thing, so you'll like this. Huh. Uh, wow, it's really weird. Every once in a while, there's like a complete and total network dropout. Like, I'll hear you get all janky, and then if it just stops, and then it comes back. And I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Well, here, I'll put you on central. I'll see if that helps. Sometimes central helps. 
Oh, let's get over there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now we're on the central Ooh, servers. Yes. All right, let's see if that makes a difference. Let's Sorry, see if those uh, Kansas-based server farm does us any good here. <sighs> anyway, so uh, uh, I learned something. This is Vegas-related, all right? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. So like this. Uh, this hotel has tons of space for people to lounge about, have little meetings, uh, mm. hang out with your significant other, comfortable chairs, a uh, place with tables and chairs that are just like little meeting spaces, like all over the place. Throughout the front end of this hotel, lots of places to hang around and, and chill. Cool. I like that. I noticed in Vegas, mm -hmm. none of the hotels have that. And I and now I find the... And it's going to seem like it's... This shouldn't have dawned on me just now, but it really did just dawn on me. They don't well, want me there. they don't make any money from places where people just hang out. Yeah, like, they don't want me there. They want me in the casino pulling levers. They want me at tables. Or they want you at the bars or the restaurants. Yeah, they don't want me this out front. This surprises you? <laughs> no, it, it annoys me because oh, they are yeah. getting my money because I'm staying at their damn hotel. It's not like the hotel's free. So And also, parking is no longer free in Vegas. It used to be free everywhere. It's not anymore. It's annoying. But yeah, there's, there's a few places. I mean, Tropicana and Treasure Island are still free. But yeah, for the most part. Well, um, that's because you want you almost have to force yourself to go to those two places. Nobody wants to go there. <laughs> that's true. So, Although, you know, it's great about Tropicana. You park at Tropicana, and then you go to all the hotels around the Tropicana, which are far better than the Tropicana. Yeah, it's a pretty decent place to park. And then, yeah, actually, that's a good point. So there is that, I it's suppose. Funny that, it's funny that it annoys you that that a place you know is just trying to get your money you discover is just trying to get your money <laughs> i guess i guess what i wish is that they would have i don't know i guess i wish they would you have, want you basically want the albert brooks uh vegas right that he described in um oh what was the movie where he oh, and where his wife were traveling across america oh i thought it was one where he was dead and rip torn was in it is that not the one no no not, not defending your life but oh. um oh, i love that movie uh I can't remember the name of it, but he and his wife are traveling across America in this, um, um, in a, basically a Winnebago trailer that they bought. They sold their house. He quit his job. They're just going to live on the nest egg. We're just going to live on the nest egg. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go to Vegas and he goes to sleep. They're, they both go to sleep. He wakes up. She's not there. He finds her down in the casino and she's gambled away her entire, lost in America, gambled away almost their entire nest egg jeez just become she's just they, he's just realized that she's a complete uh compulsive gambler and wakes up and and she's at the roulette wheel picking a random number like oh come on 23 23 and uh and so he goes to he, he arranges a meeting with the casino owner and tells well i'm a former ad man and you know maybe this is the this is the kind of thing that vegas needs we need to sell your casino as the one who has heart and gave these people their money back because of a dumb mistake oh, and wow. you know he's, he's pitching this whole ad of like vegas has heart vegas has heart <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I guess and the guy was uh gary marshall says yeah if we did that we wouldn't make any money <laughs> <laughs> well you're i mean you're making a fine point they that's they exist to get your money out of them yeah right i just it was just this reminder of oh that's right if you're not a casino hotel and if you're not Las Vegas, you can actually just chill in this place. Like you don't and have there are to probably, and you know, there's going to be exceptions to every rule, but, um, I mean, uh, uh, Plaza does have that area over off to the side, kind of between the, um, between the sports book or where the sports book, the place where you can watch sports on TV. Actually, we kind of hung out there for quite a mm -hmm. while over there by that, that sports area. We talked with Tom and Jerry last year. Didn't do it this year, but right. we had kind of a good little hangout area over there. Yeah, you're right. But, Some of the uh, older stuff, but the probably. More, but the strip places, there's going to be few and far between. If it's not, you know, basically if they have an open space where people can hang out they're like they're probably people freaking out about that in the uh executive level saying how could we make money off of this 20 square foot space what can mm -hmm. we put in there yeah. i know a cvs yeah no totally <laughs> I, I and i totally get it it's all about maximum profit in there yeah i just yeah it was nice to be reminded that some hotels actually cater to your stay you know it's not about just shoveling Bullshit. you off somewhere where you had to spend more money well, okay okay scott yeah yeah i'm taking a stand <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a stand. Some some hotels care about their their, their, their clientele. clientele. That's right. All right. Yeah, so here's anyway, the deal. So we're yeah. in this place. It's 10:30. We're waiting for cookies. 
Again, it's a dumb <laughs> thing why we're getting cookies. But there's this new service that brings cookies. And they're supposed to be right. amazing. So we thought, we're in the mood. Let's like, get some cookies. By the hotel? Or, or who's bringing the cookies? The, the, the cookie delivery service. There's some kind of service that just does this. That goes around town and drops okay, off. Okay, so it's... But these, not, not from the hotel. No, it's like no, a... No. no. Okay. Third-party service. Right. So we're in there, and that's why we're waiting in the lobby. We're chilling out in the lobby, and we're looking at the front door, waiting for this dude to come in. And while we're doing that, I hear somebody go up to the desk, which isn't far from where we're sitting... And start complaining, which is now I'm going to get to my least favorite personality type. Sure. This person is complaining because the hotel had to shut down the indoor pool. They have two pools, outdoor and indoor. Mm -hmm. They had to shut down the indoor pool because a kid pooped in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when a kid poops in a, in, a, in, a, in a hotel like this, you don't just skim it and make sure the pH levels are okay. You, oh you freaking empty no. the pool in this case. Yeah, you drain and refill. Absolutely, yeah. That's what these people were doing. They re, they were draining and refilling it. So the pool was closed from a like, I don't know, 7 to 10 that night. And this guy in his big dumb Hawaiian shirt. No no <laughs> offense. No offense, Brian. I know you like those ones. I know. I was like, come on. That's <laughs> two-thirds of my closet. No. His big dumb Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> you wear it well. Let's just say that. So uh, <laughs> he goes up to this counter and he starts really laying into this girl about how disappointed he is that he can't use the pool and what are you going to do for me and my here's what i do when the pool gets shut down mm. i don't go to the pool that's sure. it that's it i'm done right there's you nothing else to say you make yeah. other plans exactly you just don't have the pool for that time or maybe the hot tub's all right let's go in there but you just that's it you don't get to go and and this guy is asking for his three nights reimbursed he wants all his so, hotel money back because the pool got closed because a kid pooped in it now is his is his name uh was his name michael phelps <laughs> oh, no or, it was not was his name uh greg luganus no it was okay it was so he might have been, huge so anus his, is his sole name. purpose for yeah his, his sole purpose for coming to that hotel He's implying that the sole purpose of him coming to that hotel was for the pool. And yeah. if they knock, if, if if I can't get those three hours of pool time back, I want my entire stay yeah. reimbursed. And this isn't even like a parent with little kids. This is an older guy. He's there with his wife. It's, you know, there's no, he just wants to be in the pool. And, and what, I mean, I, you know, it's a nice amenity. A yeah. pool's nice. So I hear them going back and forth and back and forth. And he's like, I'm demanding satisfaction. Zubba, zubba, zubba. Freaking out, going off on this. This poor girl. And she finally says, well, there's not a whole lot I can do for you, but I can do this. I can get you two free Mother's Day, so Sunday buffet tickets, which is no small order. These are 58 bucks a piece, these buffet yeah. tickets. Yeah. They're high end. It's a high end buffet, and it, 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 it attracts lines of people every year because they have this famous Mother's Day buffet every year at this place. Oh, wow. Okay. So, like, when we left Sunday, the place was just... <laughs> lousy with people waiting for food lines to get into this buffet that's sure. how crazy it is get to that buffet. so they wow. give this guy a hundred and whatever 20 bucks worth of of you know this free ticket thing and i was so <laughs> mad i just about went over there and just said nobody owes you anything mr entitled the pool is a thing that's either up or it's not it's not part of the deal it's not the right. guarantee you didn't come to a concert and the band said sorry we're not playing that's not what happened I wanted to just go kick him in his little tiny shriveled up nuts. Just bam, 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 three or four times with my foot. Because I was so annoyed See, with this guy. And and that's and that's maybe where Vegas gets it right, because they have that whole separate resort fee, right? They'll say you pay your you pay your X amount for your room. Oh, but that doesn't include the amenities. The amenities are tucked in the separate resort fee. And that way, well, I don't know if it's it, it certainly probably isn't the reason they do it, but it does allow them to be able to say Oh yeah, you came here specifically for the pool. All right, no problem. We'll take a, we'll we'll re, uh, refund you the resort fee that you paid for for this day. Yeah. And then they're only out like twenty five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. No. And the, here's Did the thing. Did you still get your USA today? Did you right. still go to the fitness club? <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing, you, though. Here's the did thing. Did you use the Wi-Fi? <laughs> My biggest complaint is that he, I got the feeling he would do this no matter what. So the pool yeah. is his excuse this time. But he could have just walked right. up there and said, my water was slightly warmer than I expected in the Oh, it could have today. been anything, right? Like the bed wasn't comfortable or right. we I had to come down twice to get additional towels or something like that. Right. I want all my money back. Yeah, and now yeah. all and all of those yeah. are reasons to maybe say, hey, you know, just so you know, we had to come get our towels and 
It would have been cool if you guys, oh, sir, sorry, sir, like whatever. I'm not saying he shouldn't have a beef or even a beef about this pool right. thing. But the pool, really? You're going to say that your entire three, trip should be reimbursed because the pool wasn't open. For three three nights, get refunded because the pool was down for three hours. Yeah, yeah nobody that's... wants to see his freaking chicken skin weirdo old man ass in the pool anyway. Nobody wants to be floating around with that. That guy's got four-inch hairs hanging off his shoulder, just floating in there. <laughs> like a freaking uh, Cthulhu and, monster in the pool. Nobody wants him. Yeah, and the problem is this guy will go home He'll still be all ticked off, even though he got a couple nice buffets, and he'll write a scathing Yelp review about this, and probably <laughs> like even, even talk about how the the woman at the counter didn't even help. She's some you know teenager, not even authorized to be able to do anything, and she refused to get a manager. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And because of that, you know, a rating, a score, a, a star rating might go down a half a star or something. And it's a bummer because, it's you know, it's one guy being a dickhead. Yeah. And. I just don't know yeah. how you do it. You know yeah. what? That's no. why it rubs me so wrong, Brian, is because I can't do it. Yeah. That is so yeah. opposite of me in every way. Oh. I've said before, like, if we're at a restaurant and the waiter brings out a plate of horse poo by accident, I may send it back and say, oh, shoot, you got the horse poo instead of the food I ordered. Wait, 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 wait. They bring out a, a plate of horse poo and you may send it back? <laughs> There's there's a there's a there's a scenario where you don't send a plate full of horse poo back. All right, wrong term. May is not the right term. I will send that back, but I will I'll end up tipping those people anyway. Like I'm just it, we live in a society, sure. damn it. It's time for people to, to buck up. You'll be okay without your pool there, Grandpa. You'll be fine. Although I did hear another really great story. <laughs> this is from my buddy Darren. He was talking about some Jimmy goes to. And he said, one day he goes in there, and there's some dude in his 70s who's got, who's buck naked, all right? He's got okay. one leg propped up on top of the counter by the sink where everybody would go wash their hands or check their hair or whatever by the mirror. Yep. He's got his leg propped up there, buck naked, and he's got a hair dryer plugged in, and he's blow drying his uh, uh, under units. He's, uh, right, giving his... Uh Giving his undercarriage a little, how's your father? Yeah, basically. Yeah, just going <laughs> both sides, trying to get it all. Just standing there like he owns the place. So maybe what this oh. is is just, and maybe I'm headed there, but these guys they get to their like 60s and 70s, and they're just like Every, zero it, f's left. Yeah, to give. everybody owes me everything. I owe I owe nothing to anyone. I'm gonna blow dry my my, my, my under nuts. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it was a very it was a very fun trip. Other than that, although I did run into this like uh, let's call him, let's say he's a neighbor when I was a teenager, okay. across the street, and it was nice to see him. It's been a long time, but when I was growing up, uh, they I think they thought I was kind of a uh, a problem. I think they thought I was kind of weird, and uh, this tall, skinny art nerd that you know didn't like authority and didn't have a lot of respect and stuff. I think that's how they kind of felt about me back then. So when he met me now, he kept making comments like, oh, well, look at you. You turned out you okay, sure, I guess. Oh. You sure are, yeah, I grew up to be, you sure did right by yourself yeah, there. Uh. You did fine. You did. Hey, how long have you been married? 26 years. Oh, my goodness. Well, I would have never thought that. <laughs> like, it was that kind of thing. And they're, the, they're very sweet. And I, I don't want to, I'm not besmirching them. They're wonderful people. But sure. all of that feeling of like, oh, no, this adult <laughs> doesn't think I'm. But they read you wrong as a kid. Yeah, or or maybe they read me right, but they just weren't good at predicting the future because you know people mature and they don't they're not always weird. Like he he knew yeah. me when I was like I had a Honda generator on the roof and I would watch VHS movies on the roof in the summer for like three months. <laughs> and so he'd be across the street and he would see that probably and go, "What the right. what the frick is happening at their house?" So, oh, that's awesome. Anyway, that's my story. How was Detective Pikachu? <laughs> It was uh, pretty much what you'd expect, you know. It, it's a, it's a, it's basically. I want to say it's this generation's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, or um, or even Wreck It Ralph. I mean, probably same generation's Wreck It Ralph because Wreck It Ralph wasn't that long ago. But it was. It's basically one of those things where you've got a decent story, but really you're going there to say, oh, look at all the Easter eggs, look at all the little you know uh characters the side characters that they've kind of shoved in the background there's a a such and such and a de duo and a licky tongue and da da da, da. Mm. so it's it's basically if you are a pokemon fan and i wouldn't even say necessarily pokemon go teen had a great time even though the story was again meh 
it's a, kid, it's a kid's story, but the, right? It's a kid's story, exactly. Yeah. But uh, but you know, hey, Bill Nye's in it, and I love, I love me some Bill Nye. Does he play himself He's or great. some sort of creature unit? He plays a uh, well. He plays he plays a live action character. If that's what you're uh, asking, yes. He doesn't play <laughs> Bill Nye. <laughs> Yes, that is what I'm asking. I like him a yes. lot. He's awesome. <laughs> Didn't know he was he in this. Awesome. Is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Bad guy? Well, I don't want to say anything because uh, who knows? It might be rel- re- it might be uh, important to the story to know what, what he is. Does someone have to throw a ball at him to catch him or anything? <laughs> yes. You got to go catch a Bill Nye. Great. <laughs> he evolves into a, uh, a William Nye. Got to get them all. Uh, anyway, but, but yeah, no, it was, it I, was, uh, I heard really good things about it. So it seems like you had yeah. a fun time, good time. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, it depends on the theater you go to. It depends on the people around you. Obviously, we watched it in 3D because time wise, it worked out the best for us to see a 3D movie. Mm. Um, and this is a good one to see in 3D because uh, it's so much CGI that it's kind of made for that. Mm. Um, so what if I still what if I still really hate 3D? Can I not? Would you oh, still well then recommend go it? do 2D. Okay. Yeah, if you if you hate 3D, hey, I hate 3D. All I these do. things flying at me. I hate it. So yeah, that'd really? be great. I went, oh, I totally hate it. Yeah, it, it gives me a headache. It feels darker than it should. Even the best theaters, it doesn't feel right. I never liked See, it. Can't I'll, stand it. If it's a Pixar film, I will always consider 3D because I feel like those things really do well with the way the 3d is presented and this one it certainly wasn't like a 3d for 3d's sake like we're gonna put a floating voltor right in your face because it's 3d but uh i don't know it's it's um if i ever get busted for a giant crime and they're trying to find evidence like dna evidence they'll yeah. ne- they'll never find it in a 3d theater because i never go like it's the one place they oh, won't find okay. any. <laughs> That's a weird way to go. With a weird way to. <laughs> there's no like. There's that. no skin follicles. No hair follicles. No sign of Scott. That, that so I, that's my plan. If I ever commit a major crime, <laughs> I'm going to try to drive all their attention to the 3D theaters so that they spend their time in there wasting their time because you won't find me in a 3D theater. Is my uh, I don't know. I I don't. Uh, um. I don't. I don't. I certainly don't hate it. It's not my preferred method of seeing my preferred format of seeing a movie. Yeah. Like I said, if it's Pixar, if it's something like that, that's that is all CGI or heavily CGI, then I'll consider it. We only consider it in this case because it was like, well, we either go to a really late showing or we go to a really early showing, or we see this one that's at the perfect time. It's 3D. It's in the prime, the AMC Prime Theater, super comfortable. So it's like, ah, let's just do that. And there are lots of seats available. Yeah, it's because no one else likes 3D either. That's the other reason that those places oh, are empty. Geez. No, it's true. Why are they, they were, less? Why are they less the, full? The, if you if you go to like go see Endgame and the 3D theater has seats still, it's because no one likes 3D, right? No, I think it's because there's people who are planning on seeing like a dinner time show. We wanted a we wanted a mid afternoon show, and the theater, it wasn't it certainly wasn't empty. I mean, it was probably two thirds of the way full. Yeah, but I don't think, bad. I like I said, I don't think, uh, I don't think people prefer 3D. I think that you're kind of on one extreme, but I don't think everybody hates 3D like Scott hates 3D. I think if there was a boat and we were all on a boat and one side of the boat said anti-3D and then the far other end of the boat was like pro-3D, uh, uh-huh. we'd be sinking the boat on my side because way more of us really dislike it. There'll be a few of you in the middle like you where they can take it or leave it. Yeah, I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of you in the middle, but I think our ship's going to sink either way. And I, I guess I stand behind it. I think it depends on the film. Mm. I think that there's there's films where 3D is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jake Calhoun, I'm tempted to go see Detective Pikachu, but I hate children. So he's, he's going to Well, wait. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, come on. Kids are fun, especially if they're enjoying a film. Like a movie like that, it's, it's fine if there's a bunch of kids in there. And as long as they're not screaming and being annoying, I guess. Yeah, there was uh, there was a kid sitting directly in front of us, and he was having a great time. Every once in a while, he'd like shout out the name of a of a character or like a, a Pokemon. It's mm. like, ah, it's kind of fun actually. He didn't mind that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Well, all right, this is a good yes. this is a good good a good lesson. Everybody, spend your money wisely. Go see a Detective Pikachu. Uh, no, I mean, you know, see it if you want to see it if you're interested in it. Okay. Certainly, this is not a glowing review by any means. This is me saying mm. if you're into Pokemon. Then go see it. 
Wow. And so you don't think in, if you're not into Pokemon, not not worth no. your time? No, God no. No, there's no. If you're not into Pokemon, what are you going to go for? A mediocre story? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, let's yeah. see. Uh, did well over the like, weekend. I don't, think I'd, I don't think I'd recommend it to you because I think um, you maybe played what one of those games in the '90s. I uh, played, yeah, and I never liked the. I can't stand random battles. I hate them, so yeah. I quit yeah. playing so, pretty early. Yeah. You'll be happy to know there aren't random battles in the movie. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so someone's not just running around and bumps into something in the weeds and then has to fight it. That doesn't happen. Right, no, it doesn't happen. Oh, that's but, good. Uh, that's good. Um, yeah, and Ryan Reynolds is, uh, he's all right in it. I mean, does, you know, it's its not, it's certainly not going to be your Deadpool level of uh, Ryan Reynolds, but it's its enough Ryan Reynolds that Tina enjoyed that part of well, it. Well, you heard you heard what exists. She likes Ryan Reynolds. There's, there's a cut of this movie where all the outtakes and him being goofy on Mike, where he cusses tons. So apparently there's a whole there's enough content to make a whole cut of this movie that could be rated R if they wanted to. Seriously? Just based on the language, yeah. That That's could hilarious. that could be really inter- that I, interesting. That I, you know, that I'd see it again. I mean, I have no plans ever even when it comes on stream or anything like that. I have no plans to see this movie again. However, yeah, yeah. if they release that version, yes, I'd see that. Uh, also things are looking real good for John Wick Chapter 3, so very excited. Cool. That's next weekend, and it already is enjoying a ninety-eight percent. I hate Wick movies. I hate movies that feature Wicks. Oh, I love I movies like that feature movies Wicks. If there's a candle, nope, I won't see it. If there's ever any sort of murder that takes place at a at a movie that features a Wick in the title, I'm not going to go see it. You won't find any of my DNA in a Wick movie. That's right. You'll never find a Wick movie with my DNA in it. <laughs> but I wouldn't watch it in 3D. I'll watch John Wick three probably multiple times, but I will not watch it in 3D. Well, Boom! Then. Take that, 3D okay, lovers. Okay, you won that one. You won that one, Johnson. I don't know if you paid attention here, though, but the chat room seems to be overwhelmingly on my side for once. It doesn't. I've been watching the chat room, and there are people who are saying I like 3D. I've made peace with 3D. So you can't use your... No, your, no, no. I'm I told just talking you so. About, you can't use your I told you so on this one, Johnson. I'm just talking about volume-wise. If, if we did a straw poll in there... I think that there are people who've said, like, Gutter's a tool. I prefer a 3D. Uh, Darth Van, I hated 3D at one time. Now I made my peace with it. Yeah, I just bought two last set. What does it mean you made your peace with it? It means you don't go to 3D movies anymore, right? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I've made peace with 3D. What does that mean? <laughs> does that mean you've seen? Are you, are you still going to see 3D movies, or does that mean you you avoid them but you no longer get all worked up like me about it? Is that what he's saying? I don't know what that means. I think he's saying that there are some movies that he probably is, is okay with 3D in. Mm. All right. This is the other problem. <laughs> Even if we did a straw poll, you guys like to cheese me and troll me so much that there's no way it'd be a fair poll anyway. There would be people who hate 3D that would vote the other way just to see me <laughs> writhe on the on the air. So I'm not going to do it. Don't, oh, Jay Calhoun already made one. All right. Let's go vote. Here you go. Jack, you got it. <laughs> do you like 3D? No. Oh, and this is going to turn into a, see? See, Brian? See? No, this is the problem is he's got, <laughs> he did is, that thing. Totally is. He did that thing you're not thing. supposed do to do. Do you like 3D movies? Here's the thing. Do you like 3D movies? No. I can't answer that with a full-on yes because I don't necessarily like 3D movies. There are movies I will see in 3D. This is a this is a garbage, and I like the third option, <laughs> Pol Pot. This is a garbage straw poll because it does not take into offense, or take, uh, take into offense, take into account people who are like i'm okay with 3d yeah you're right it isn't in fact that pot that pull pot should have been indifferent or don't care or doesn't matter it should have been something like that you know what everybody in the chat treat pull pot as that that third option (laughs) but i would like to mention that we are now 61 we're 61 percent to 21 here comes here comes i predicted that that is the thing i predicted perfectly was scott saying see see i'm right look look at it look at the numbers look at that that is a that's a pretty wide margin right there. It's a garbage 3D poll. <laughs> garbage. Somebody, no, because it's absolutely garbage. Somebody make another poll that that adheres to Brian's poll standards, oh, and, the, no, and then we'll vote bo- in there. Don't don't, bo- don't bother. Then we'll don't vote bo- in there. No, let's get to Babel Royale. We got people waiting. Sixty to seventeen percent. Look at it. <laughs> You know what? You're right, Scott. I give up on 3D movies. They all suck. I'm done watching 3D movies. You've convinced me. You've turned me around on this. Ah, finally, I've done it. I knew I could if I worked hard at it. All right, let's get... uh, Who are we doing here this with? Oh, we're doing with Randy. Randy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting him in here. All right, here we go. Let's do some Battle Royale, and let's have people win some stuff, because damn it... 
Oh, geez, we're already getting a call. Hold on. Oh, what? this is all happening so fast. Okay, hold on. Okay. Uh, that's a thing. Okay. Oh, that's loud. Hold on a second, loud person. Uh, did they hang up? No. I'm here. Oh, you're there. Okay, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. You're our friend. We like you. Also, Randy, you're here. You're here somewhere. Oh my gosh, am I here? Yes. Okay. So. All right. Hold I'm on. Hold on. Wait, wait, I gotta play this first. Hold on. <laughs> It's time for us to play a little Battle Royale, and Randy's here. Randy, what were you going to say? Go. Uh, two things. Two things. One, that Detective Pikachu was awesome. Okay. It was so good, Scott. You're going to love this movie. It has so much heart. And, oh, my gosh, I was crying at the end. Wow. Not Endgame crying. Endgame, really? I cried like a dozen times at the end. But uh, Detective Pikachu, oh, my gosh. You spend the whole movie wondering, are they going to do the thing, the particular thing? You don't really realize it until you're watching the movie. You wonder, are they going to do a thing? Are they going to do a thing? And then they do the freaking thing at the end of the movie. They were just... Oh, it was so satisfying. Well, all right. Uh, bro, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ibit, what... are you okay? Yeah. No, I'm trying to figure out what the thing was. I'm like, what's the thing? What's the thing he's talking about? Yeah. Did you um, Did you really, I mean, you really liked it. You're not just being uh, ironic here yes, or something. Yes, I okay. loved this movie. I thought it was so nice. And you, you and... probably played a bunch of Pokemon games in the 90s, right, growing up? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. I definitely, I definitely watched the cartoon, like the original first hundred episodes of uh, Pokemon oh, but um, okay. the 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 main thing for me was that it did hit all the notes for Pokemon lovers mm -hmm. yes like oh, yes there yes, yes there there were random encounters yes there was literally a, a trainer throwing a ball to try to catch a Pokemon etc cetera, etc cetera, but it left all of those where they belong mm. they weren't you know they weren't a big deal they were part yeah. of the of, uh, uh, just a, a passing fancy along with this story so like if you haven't if you know nothing about pokemon you're going to you're going to learn enough as you go to appreciate the the universe they live in yeah. so like i just i i just i i feel like we're uh brian and i are on the opposite side of that thing i always talk about where you're like it's a good movie but it's not great mm -hmm. and and people treat you like you hated it like that I, I, you clearly didn't hate it right yeah. oh, oh i definitely i definitely didn't hate it and i'd say um but I'd say I probably would not have enjoyed it had I not been a, a Pokemon Go player. Had I not like seen these guys and go, oh, look, there's one of those guys. Oh, what's this guy right there? But it's, uh, I, I mean, story wise, it's like, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a story. What was your ratio? <laughs> what, was what? Your, what was you your what? ratio to uh, each Pokemon that would show up? Did you know how many? Did you know who they were immediately just on site? Like, you're um, like oh, that's probably that about eighty percent of them. That's me. pretty good. Oh, really? I knew all yeah. of them. I like, wouldn't know. Well, I don't do think mean? I'd know what? ten percent of them. Probably, I'd probably get super <laughs> but, lost. But that's not the. But that's not the. It doesn't matter. It really does not matter if mm. you do, if you know any of them, because this movie is absolutely carried from beginning to end by Ryan Reynolds, and he is so charming and so funny, and it's just I, I, just, I just love this movie like. I, I don't see I don't see a reason to not go see it. Like, it, you, like you said, you can see it in 2D if you don't like 3D. I saw it in 3D. I thought the 3D was very competent. That's the, my my highest uh, uh, compliment for 3D. It's very competent. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, other thing, other thing, most important, mm -hmm. other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been making a list for Babel Royale. So, <laughs> if, if that's not how this game works. <laughs> if the category if the category is awesome television shows that ruined it all in their final season. Uh, I'm here. Uh, I got it. Uh, I'm going to blow this one down. Another one, a thing I do not agree with you on, but that's okay. A rushed, yes. Bad, no. But we're not going to spoil anything, everybody. Go watch your go watch your Game of Thrones. All right. We got a caller on the He's line. clearly talking about Veep. Yeah, it's got to be Veep. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and Dexter. And by the way, I loved, and... I loved last night's Veep finale. That's all I'm going to say about it. I got to catch up and watch it. I have not seen yeah. any of the season yet, but I will. Uh, we have a listener on the line whose name is who? Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Joe from Los Angeles. Well, hello, Joe. Thanks for your patience and hanging on there for us. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to play a little game with you, see if we can win you some prizes. Uh, Joe, Brian Ibbett will explain to you the rules. Yes, that's right, Joe. I'm going to give Scott and Brian I'm done away. I'm going to give Scott and Randy Jordan a topic. I'm a, I'm a creature of script, and they're going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win is going to go to the other player. Your job, Joe, is to predict who is going to come out on top. Based on the topic today, you are playing for a prize package. That includes the last copy of Leaving Earth by J.W. Scarpacci, as well as... 
uh, courtesy of Rydog, a couple of Steam games. Excellent ones. Dead Rising 2. I loved Dead Rising. And one I don't know about, a story about my uncle. Here's a spoiler alert. It's actually about his aunt. Uh, two games on Steam, as well as the last copy of Leaving Earth on Kindle by J.W. Scarpacci. Nice. Uh, the topic today is... This one comes to us from uh, Joe Acosta, who's, um, man, just been killing it with recommendations or, or Babel Royales. Uh, so we talked uh, last week about McDonald's. That's oh, that's him. This is that oh, Joe. Oh, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I guess I can't, can't use this one, can I? <laughs> you should, you've given me like well, I, I, I don't know I if you should be allowed to. Question, what, so you can use well, it, yeah, I suppose. He's not, he's not <laughs> providing answers. No, I know. Well, that's actually true. Yeah, that's a really good point. Never mind. Yeah, you can. Uh, we can try it. Yeah. Well, there's no there's no effect on the game because it really does de- uh, does depend on the two of you. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Joe. We're using this, and and you get to hear it live. Uh, McDonald's. We talked about last week starting to sell uh, the uh, Stroop waffle, Stroop waffle McFlurry, mm. and the Grand Extreme McBacon Burger, the Tomato Mozzarella Chicken Sandwich, Cheesy Bacon Fries. Um, those are going to start June fifth. But um, this is America, and right now we can get 11 delicious 100% all-beef burgers today at McDonald's. So there are 11 burger menu items that are all beef, no chicken sandwiches, no fish witch, no or filet of fish or whatever. Talking about the 100% all-beef burgers. All right. There are 11 on the menu right now. How many can you name? Oh, oh man. Oh, boy. All right, <laughs> Jim. <funny>. So... <laughs> Joe, knowing <laughs> knowing so much about this uh, this question and the answers, um, how well do you think uh, the guys are going to do? Who do you think is going to take this? Well, now I'm stuck because I was thinking Brian and 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 Scott were going to be the ones I was writing the quiz for. So I'm going to say <sighs> Randy to win with Scott to start. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. Interesting. Burger pressure, Randy. Burger pressure. I. I actually, I didn't go to McDonald's for like a decade, and then it just happens the last like two or three months, I've been going to McDonald's like once a week. Mm. So, oh, wow. I, it's are you just, trying to, are you I, trying to I always get... the Avengers uh, Endgame figures too? Exactly. Mm. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's the whole reason. And the thing is, like, I can order with my eyes closed because I don't really venture outside of like a couple of things that I like, so it's like... How much have I looked at that big board of a menu? I don't know. By the way, do those do those come with every meal or only kids' meals, or how do you get those things? What do you do to get them when you're at McDonald's? The toys. Nobody. No one knows. No idea. Uh, what, I'm sorry. Say the question again. I thought you were asking Randy. Sorry. Either one of <laughs> e- like, anyone who has the toys. How do you get the toys? How do you? You, you just walk up to the counter and and uh, say what what uh, Happy Meal toys do you have, and they'll sell you to them. Uh, sell them to you separately. Oh, so they do with, cost. I them. usually. I'll actually still buy something. Yeah. Uh, I found out that the, according to the Weight Watchers app, blows my mind. The vanilla cone only two Weight Watchers points, which is like knowing that that ice cream is only two points blows my blows my freaking. That's up. that's because there's zero food in it. It's a fascinating. <laughs> I know substance. the cone. I'm sure the cone is like uh, the same packing material that uh, Amazon ships your router in. But uh, yep. but the but the fact that the the ice cream doesn't have enough dairy in it to really <laughs> layer on some yeah. points kind of bums me out all right well i'm going to start with big mac and get that out of the way knock the big mac out and of course uh, it's right there two all beef patty special sauce lettuce cheese pickles onions on a sesame seed bun 540 calories on that bad boy the big mac right there i'm i'm going to start on the other end of the menu and i'm going to say hamburger <laughs> That seems like a good one to choose. Uh, hamburger, only 250 points, and it's uh, it's basically a burger with um, these weird dehydrated onion things on there. Did you, wait, so you things. said the vanilla cone was two points? Two points. So the, the hamburger is literally 125 times? The, that's unbelievable. Well, it's cause 125x. It's because it's not really ice cream, right? Isn't that stuff? No, no, some no. Kind no. Of... I'm not talking about how many points. I said uh, 250 calories on the. Oh, did okay. you, points on the yes, hamburger? Yes, you did. And I was just oh, like, that's God. insane. Oh, what God. is White no, 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 no. doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McDonald's. No, I'm curious, actually, what what a McDonald's hamburger is, points wise. Just bur- just burger wise, probably not that bad. It's probably uh, eight points for a single hamburger. It's not too bad. Eh, it's a pretty shitty meal, though, right? Yeah, like, it's not good. <laughs> no, um, no, definitely not. All right, I'm going to go with the uh, McDouble. 
I like the McDouble. The McDouble, uh, two hundred percent pure beef patties, seasoned with just a pinch of salt and pepper, topped with tangy pickles, chopped onions, ketchup, mustard, and a slice of melty American cheese. Joe, you really went all out on the uh, the the uh, <laughs> the flavor text for these uh, these answers, I, I, which I absolutely appreciate. I, I used. I reached out to the marketing team at McDonald's. They were very, they were very, uh, very gracious. <laughs> really? I should have reached out to Weight Watchers. I could have answered the the points questions as well. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I appreciate that. Three hundred and ninety calories on that McDouble. All right. Well, then my next answer needs to be the McHalf, which is a cheeseburger. That would be a McDouble minus one of those patties. Uh, <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger is is one of my original go tos. I would, you know, like I. Went back when they had like uh, you could get a, a hamburger or a cheeseburger for like fifty cents, and you, yeah. I, I'd drive up and order like ten cheeseburgers. Yeah, like, it's back that when was, we had we had, the, my... we had the we had the metabolism to process that garbage back mm-hmm. then. Yeah. yeah, that was my go-to as well. When they did the like the, the there was always one extra value meal that instead of having like a a ginormous burger you'd get two cheeseburgers and fries and a drink, and I'd always do the two cheeseburgers and fries and drink for whatever. I don't know, maybe it was the bun. I like the cheeseburger bun, but yeah, of course, that's on here. 300 calories for uh, for the same thing that's a hamburger, but a slice of melty American cheese yeah. on top. Um, Scott. I'm thinking. I'm rooting for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting to run out. Oh, the quarter pounder. Ooh. The quarter pounder, of course. Yep, quarter pounder is... Um, 540 calories. We're going to call it the quarter pound with cheese, even though you can get it without cheese and that qualifies. So quarter pound with cheese, um, pinch of salt, pepper, sizzled on a flat iron grill, then topped with a slivered onions, tangy pickles, and two slices of melty cheese on a sesame seed bun. Mm. All right. All right. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a a risk here because I saw, I've stared at something on the menu and wondered why, why is this the thing? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to risk that you will accept double cheeseburger as a different sandwich mm. than the ones we've previously named mm. and I, I think i know the answer why there's there's both a mcdouble and a double cheeseburger on the menu mm. the double is cheeseburger, it a separate item on the menu randy mm. it appears to have an extra slice of cheese when i look at all those big pictures that are fl- flashing in my face mm. That is correct. Yes, the double cheeseburger, two hundred percent pure beef patty season. The blah blah blah, two slices of melted American cheese, which is the only <laughs> differentiation between the McDouble and the double cheeseburger. Yeah, oh, that's I dare awesome. I dare you to go to McDonald's and say I want a um, I want a McDouble, but give me two slices of cheese. Just so you <laughs> they will, yeah, you actually get the uh, the, well, it, the high school student behind the counter. You'll see smoke coming out of their ears, and well, oh, you know, I don't get it. Does not compute. You know, I live in California, so they all have those uh, ordering kiosks now. And if you if you're willing to get out of your car and go in in the horrible weather out there, uh, yeah, you can make all sorts of weird things. All right, I'm gonna go with. Uh, oh wait, I, no, you just went. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm really nervous. These aren't on all the menus. Ever. Does it have to be nationwide? Can it be a thing that's only happening regionally, or, or what? I'm curious about what McDonald's thing you have that's only regional. Well, sometimes they do test the markets. Utah Classic or something. <laughs> no, it's not like yeah. that. It's it would be a test. Current. They do it, test it, it stuff. It would be current, like current stuff. All right. Oh, really? Okay. Do you guys get you guys get uh, test markets? Yeah, stuff in I think I'm I'm pretty sure lots of areas do, but we get. We had one recently, and I don't know if I dare do it. All right, I'm just going to go with the one I think is on there, which is the Mac Jr., or the Big Mac Jr. There is not a Big Mac Jr. on the current nationwide. What? That must have been a, yeah, that must have been a uh, It was, yeah. A this this came thing. and went here, and it stopped. I can uh, get it here, I think. Months. I think I can get it now. Are we sure? It's it's not on the current list of 11, and... Uh, uh. Hold on. It may may have been, and certainly may have been a thing where it was like, yeah, around for a limited time, and then they. Uh, yeah, it seems like there was. How about the other one, the Grand Mac? Is that not yeah, there? Yeah, that, that, that was, also that was disappeared. The same time. Yeah, that was that was a limited time thing here as well. The Damn Grand it. Mac and the Junior Big Mac. All right. Well, we know what that means. Congratulations, you're a winner. That is to say, Joe is. You want to tell us the rest of the burgers? I will tell well, you once the again. Rest. I just want to say yeah. once again, I won, but I was really running on fumes, man. I was, <laughs> I, I was like, okay, I got a, I got a double quarter pounder with cheese in me, and then I'm, I'm tapped. That's it. 
Yeah. No, and did you, so you didn't have anything? What did you say you still had in the in the in the pocket? Did you have one? Double in your quarter pocket? pounder with cheese was the only yes. thing I yep. knew for sure I could go with. Is a double yep, quarter is, pounder with cheese? Oh my gosh! Basically, you should just call it a half pounder with cheese. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot, dude. Uh, the mushroom and Swiss burger, the double mushroom and Swiss burger, the quarter pounder with cheese, double quarter pounder with cheese, bacon smokehouse burger. And do you want to guess? Yes, it is the double bacon smokehouse burger. <laughs> if if there's a such thing as a double bacon smokehouse burger, there should absolutely still be a Grant Big Mac. That's just not fair. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, You're yeah there right. should be a double Big Mac. Because yeah. that's the only thing on here that isn't the like either a regular or a double version, right? Because like the, the McDouble, if you get it without cheese, is basically a double hamburger, the double cheeseburger. But that Big the, Mac would be what, like six patties and three another th Two. Four patties, and I mean, well, I guess it depends on what they really double. If they just double the meat, then it's really two patties. But those two patties aren't, they aren't like the quarter pounder patties. No. They're probably eighth pound patties. I'm not even sure. All right, sure give, me a, give me a quick round table. Scott Johnson, what's your order at McDonald's? Uh, You're going there for lunch right now. What's if I order? went right now, like this second. Um, now, now, forget the diet whole thing. Like the, your lifetime yeah. of experience leads you to an order at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> I really do like the McDouble, but I'm going to, if you're asking today, I'd get that bacon or I'd get that uh, mushroom and Swiss thing and uh, fries and a Coke because you only get Coke there. Anything else is stupid. You have to get Coke. And there. we're saying diet notwithstanding. Like this is. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you're, you're going to McDonald's for one final lunch and you're getting what you want. You're like 17 you, years so old. The portal is going to open in my stomach and anything <laughs> I eat is going to go to another, is going to go to the soul, soul dimension or something yeah, like that. Right, yeah. Yes. Uh, Big Mac uh, with uh, large fries. All right, that'll work. Nice. And so and a uh, shamrock shake. Well, I guess they're not making them right now, so it would just be a chocolate shake. Yeah. I, I, I developed this thing a long time ago where I get a Big Mac, and I also get an order of McNuggets, and you squeeze the Big Mac down a little bit, and what comes <laughs> out, you, you swipe your McNugget through that before you eat the Big Mac. What's the daily oh, double? They have something called a oh, daily really? double on here. Is that a wait, thing? wait. So you, so you just you have the you do the Big Mac squeezins into like a uh, into your cardboard box, and then you dip the nuggets into the squeezins. You hold the Big Mac in your left hand, and you squeeze it a little bit. You pick up a McNugget, and you just dra drag it across the side of the Big Mac. The Big Gross. Mac right in. Collect, collect the edge. It's freaking the edge, fantastic. Uh, Oh, and nice. and sometimes you get you get both Thousand Island and cheese and a, mm. the sliver of lettuce and it's fantastic. Trust Which is me. why you don't fantastic. just say give me an order of chicken McNuggets and a side of special sauce. No 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 no. You got to do this all together <laughs> because when you're once you've eaten those those nuggets, then you still have the re remainder of the Big Mac to shove in your face. Now sure. on the they have a sure. dollar menu and on there they have the grilled onion cheddar burger. They have uh, the day something called the daily double. Do these count at all? As a, as a, they weren't on this. They weren't on this list, so I don't know what the. Not that I knew them or anything, but regional. What the regional uh, issue is, I don't know if those are. Uh, you know um, what? I'm annoyed the by their menu because their menu says dollar menu and more. You yeah. would think that means. <laughs> what it means is some most of it costs more than a dollar. Is what they mean by that? Right. Exactly. It's like the everything's a dollar plus yeah. store. So yeah. everything's a dollar except for these items that aren't a dollar. Yeah. This is terrible. I, I think the only thing that's a dollar on that dollar menu are the any size soda. Uh, you might be mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Here, the grilled onion cheese cheddar burger, whatever that is, is only a buck. It says, and then the barbecue ranch burger is only a buck if you get the dollar version. So Joe, those didn't come up when you were putting this question together. I love the fact that you're on. I just, I just went with the. I went so with the the way they set up the website, it mm -hmm. has just the national burgers, and so I'm guessing those are their all beef patty burgers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, who knows what the dollar menu burgers made of if, if it wasn't listed in their all beef patty burger section? <laughs> Is it bad that I want to go there? Beef patties. I kind of want to go there right now. What? You guys are killing way, me with this. I want to eat. By the way, Operation, one more Operation Skinny Scott They're taking a dark turn today. After yeah, Battle Royale. not gonna work. One more, one more quick question about McDonald's because this is the subject that fascinates me to no end. If you don't have Big Mac squeezins for your for your nuggets, what are you <laughs> dipping them in? What's your choice dip? At uh, honey mustard for me. Szechuan thing that the the <laughs> the Rick and Morty yeah, Szechuan sauce. Yeah, I love that stuff. It's really good. Well, you know, they have a sweet chili, or at least they do here. They have a sweet chili sauce that's pretty, oh, pretty really? good and close. Yeah. Yeah, do they not have that there? No. I have no idea. Uh, I, I... We do our pink sauce thing here in Utah, so that's a thing I'd do. Mm -hmm. I'd do mm -hmm. some of that business. 
trying to think what mm. else I like in there. No, I love the sweet chili idea because, uh, man, that's that's something that Tina and I looked all over the place for in Australia, and we tried to we basically tried to make our own when we got back because they had uh, the sweet chili sauce was one of their go to condiments at restaurants. Does McDonald's like, oh, we're totally? Does McDonald's have a um, like a secret? You know how you can go to uh, uh, I can't think of any names all of a sudden. Uh, in and out, yeah. How they'll give you like. If you is there any like wink wink things I can say to a McDonald's guy and he'll do something funny to a burger that nobody knows about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's websites absolutely chock full of things that that the McDonald's people tend to know what to do with. Oh yeah, look at this McDonald's secret menu, hacking the menu. Oh, maybe I will go there today. <laughs> All right. We'll yeah, see. and and I I don't feel like you've lived if you've not ordered two Big Macs and then tried to put them together, tried to lace them together into one big tall burger. It's wow. so interesting. You do like a deck of cards, just put it all together. Like that. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Um, all right, Joe, you're the winner, clearly. Uh, and all you got to do is send an email to Brian Coverville at gmail.com. He'll send you your right. winnings. And uh, by all means, keep sending us topics. You seem to be good at Absolutely. this. Absolutely. You, you, you send some great ones, and uh, uh, you deserve these prizes. So well yeah. done. Well done, dude. Thanks for playing. Thanks, guys. Uh, more on the way. All right, we'll see you later. How do I hang up on you? There we go. Uh, well done. Well done. Very well done. Daryl. Uh, Daryl, uh, uh, Brett, yeah, Randy. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even done away like our most recent. It's because right like, it's it's like I just got a text from Daryl. He says he's got some internet problems, so we're calling him at home today. So, oh, okay, that'll cool. be fun. Um, anyway, hey, that's it. Yeah, uh, thanks for standing in, dude. Uh, we want to uh, wish our pal Dunaway a good week. He uh, some some uh, devastating family stuff happening there uh, with his fiance's family, and he is uh, very busy just trying to make sure things are okay. And so uh, we're thinking about you, Dunaway. We hope you're okay, buddy, and uh, no worries. Uh, even if you're not here Wednesday, we'll we'll cover for you. We got you. We got you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Dunaway's such a good dude. I it just bugs me whenever my friends are hurting. Yeah, something bad happens, yeah. and somebody, somebody we know this well and like this much, it's um, extra not easy. So uh, we my, hope uh, things go. Okay. One of my mom's best friends died a few days ago, and they had the funeral yesterday on Mother's Day. Oh gosh! And it was oh, just like the, it was. It was like the only time the family could yeah. possibly do it, mm. and it was the only time like the funeral home could do it. And and it was interesting because I, I'm talking to my mom, right? Happy Mother's Day. I hope you know. Hope you like the flowers I sent you. And she's fine, but she's like, so I'm just back from like this, like family reunion that I went to on Mother's Day of crying people. Mm. But it was interesting. It got me thinking like mother's day should be like that like not the death part and the crying part but getting to see all of her friends and her friends kids and this kind of thing was like really uplifting for her and i just got to think of it man moms should have like a mother's day gathering every year that was like something we should make happen yeah why not that's why we do this thing kim always goes out of town for mother's day she much prefers it to uh yeah the usual which is sort of, yeah. you know, sitting around, sitting around waiting for your kids to do something nice, which I don't think anyone likes doing very much. Uh, Randy, always a pleasure. Randy Deluxe on Twitter. We will, uh, of course, have him back with us this coming Saturday, hopefully, for another film sack. Hopefully oh, things yeah, will, we uh, got a good one coming up. Something will chill out, uh, or things will chill out a little bit on uh, Dunaway's end, and we can make sure to see that happen. In the meantime, have a fantastic day, Randy. We'll see you I love later. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see you, buddy. He always loves us, he says. Well, he all right does. then. Let's uh today's today's show's weird, so I'm just gonna go right into the news. We'll do a song break after yeah. that and then bring in Daryl. How about that? Oh yeah, right. Sounds good. Why not? Hold on. I don't have any of that ready though. Okay, now I do. Here you go. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. <laughs> It's the news brought to you by, by the T Grotto, Grotto, Grotto in downtown Salt Lake City. Tell yeah. us about it. I recommend it. It's a little place called the T Grotto. Um, you just look it up if you're in the Salt Lake area. And if you like, it's basically what I picture Phoenix Pearl Tea looking like in Montana. Uh, we walk in there and they've got, you know, this ginormous selection on the walls of different custom made, custom mixed teas, including this crazy white tea thing that's like a little brick that you can just use over and over and over and it's really really old and aged and off. yeah i can't figure it out it's the weirdest thing and you and it's and you can seep it like multiple mm -hmm. many times 
Um, it's really weird. But anyway, it's there's crazy. that. It they had... It's amazing that it doesn't lose its uh, doesn't lose its its potency. Yeah, it looked like a little like a soap that was used a lot. It was really weird. <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> so. <laughs> so maybe that's it. It just is like a, it's such a dense brick that only the outer strata ever uh, dissolves into your tea, and then. Uh, yeah, it was weird. Uh, I'll bet Gwen would know exactly what it is. I was new to it. It was like twenty five bucks or something for that thing, and apparently it lasts forever. But then they had all these other kind of teas. I got a blueberry matcha, which is kind of my thing right now, and it was fantastic. But anyway, if you're looking for just cool ambience and rad interior design and just all the teas you could imagine, plus there's a bunch of really great little restaurants. We we went there while we waited for a table at the breakfast place next to it, and it was great. So anyway, it's called the Tea Grotto. And they're not, you know, they're not sponsoring or anything. I just liked it. It was cool. Uh, all right. We got, a, we got a thing happening in Australia. Hundreds were evacuated from an Australian college library because of smelly fruit. <laughs> have you heard of a durian oh, yeah. fruit? What is durian I fruit? Have. You- durian fruit, is, it's known for being absolutely repulsive uh, in its smell. And I want to say it's like... Uh, there's that ugly fruit that's like really spiky, but something, but durian kind of looks similar to that, mm. if I remember correctly. Any, is it edible? Like um, it doesn't, it tastes okay? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, 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 I guess. I've never, I've never had it because um, the, the, everything you ever hear about durian fruit is that it just smells so disgusting. So, Man, look at that. I couldn't get past that. Like I wouldn't be able to say, oh, well, if it smells disgusting, but tastes great, I'll have to try that. But, you're right about yeah, the spiky spiky yeah the the outer yeah. outer edges of this thing is really ooh, look at those they look prehistoric or something mm-hmm. nasty well anyway i guess these really stink and uh the library of an australian university was evacuated as a result they thought it was a gas leak it turned out to be something totally different around 550 people evacuated from the university of canberry's library in under six minutes on thursday because of what was believed to be a gas leak uh, the unpleasant smell turned out to be durian, a smelly fruit. We are open, the university wrote about an hour later. The lingering gas smell in the building is completely safe. Someone left a durian fruit in one of our bins. The offending fruit was dubbed, or as dubbed by the school, has a creamy, stringy texture. No thanks, Ugh, dude. Already, already, that's like, the, <laughs> I don't want that combination of anything. That sounds awful. Like, give me a creamy texture on something or give me a stringy texture, like string cheese or, or you know, something like that. I don't want both together. That's, uh... Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, Smithsonian once described it as, quote, turpentine and onions garnished with a gym sock. Ugh. Yeah. So do you think it was like a, like a, a prank that they left this in there? Or was somebody <laughs> like, no, I happen to like durian fruit. I just forgot it. I just accidentally <laughs> left it in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels like... If it has that notorious of a of a, of a um, reputation, somebody had to know what they were doing mm-hmm. by putting it in that can. There's no way that thing was gonna make anybody too happy. Yeah. Uh, good news though Ugh. for residents of Arizona. If you're into being like a ninja, nunchucks are no longer a felony. It used to be a felony to own them uh, in uh, in Arizona. Well, how is it a felony to own nunchucks but not to own a gun? I don't get that. I mean, I understand we, um, yeah, you know, knows. First Amendment doesn't say uh, right, right to, to bear nunchucks. Yeah, right to bear nunchucks. <laughs> Second, <laughs> Second Amendment. <laughs> That's funky right. to me. Anyway, right. on Friday, State Republican Governor Doug Ducey uh, to sign a bill removing nunchucks from a list of prohibited weapons that includes bombs, gun silencers, and automatic firearms. Until Friday, people who pra- uh, practiced martial arts faced the risk of felony charges for possessing nunchucks in public. Arizona only allowed the weapons to be used in preparation for martial arts competitions. Uh, the average person can do far more damage using a baseball bat than nunchucks, says Arizona Representative jo- John Kavanaugh, a Republican. He told Yeah, but can you lob a fly ball into right field with a pair of nunchucks? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, you know, probably not, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to think who could do that, but nobody that I can think of. Says they are not dangerous to anybody, and we really think kids and adults should do martial arts activities. Uh, should be it should be legal for them to possess them. Several states, including Arizona, adopted the ban in the 70s as martial arts movies took off, like the stuff Bruce Lee was in, according to the Arizona Daily Star. Oh, weird! A bunch of old farts reacting to to popular culture, and then banning something weird. That never happens. 
Weird. Last year, a federal judge struck down a similar ban in New York, ruling that nunchucks were protected under the Second Amendment. Speaking of the Second Amendment, supporters of the bill mm. are celebrating, saying that people who use the weapons for martial arts are unlikely to use them to commit a crime. It's true. Second Amendment is really just the right to bear arms. It doesn't say what those arms are. Uh, most people just assume guns, mm -hmm. but uh, arms are, are anything, uh, any sort of weapon. So, did you go through a? Is a katana? Is a katana protected under the Second Amendment? It must be because it's you know it's a weapon. I think swords are protected. I don't know actually. Yeah. Now that you say that, hmm. I don't know if you'd. I mean, you're not going to do well against somebody with a gun, but... No. You might do well against somebody with nunchucks. Yes. <laughs> Depends on how long the chain is between those nunchucks. Yeah. I played enough Soul Calibur to know who wins that fight, I guess. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Did you go yeah. through a um, uh, like a teenage period where you were super into nunchucks and ninja stars and all that crap? Or did I that... did not, but I was part of a group of friends that had that that had those uh, tendencies they were like all excited about ninja stars and uh mm -hmm. that was it it was really like throwing stars and nunchucks nobody was into like i'm gonna carry a bow staff around or <laughs> any of the other yeah. ninja weapons it just seemed to be primarily those you know those things and and they you know the 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 store that sells all the chinese import crap mm -hmm. was all over the selling those to uh, uh to the teenagers yeah we were by one over the weekend and they had all sorts of swords and katanas and i mean i kind of like that stuff but i never i didn't really have the the phase either when my friends were going but i had like you i had friends that were and they were bringing this stuff to school and they were getting in trouble all the time and they were chucking ninja stars and in, in like shop class and the wood that mm -hmm. they would set up mm -hmm. and like it just seemed like it was a thing for a hot minute that was a huge thing for kids growing up i don't know if they care about that stuff anymore but uh, back in the day man that was uh that was a big deal yeah. Uh, here's a great excuse for your child porn collection. You ready for this one? <laughs> I've been looking for one, so good, yes. Good. Please. This guy in Texas has you covered. A Texas man blames West Nile virus for his child porn distribution. Oh, sure. Yeah, the mosquitoes made me do it. Yeah, always. Always the, the, yeah. the, the virus mm -hmm. carried by mosquitoes are the ones that get you distributing child porn, as we all know. Mm -hmm. As we know. Says a man who claimed to suffer from brain damage because of the West Nile virus was sentenced to 20 years in prison for recording and distributing child pornography. Irving Moses Marquez, age 30, received the maximum, maximum sentence after he pled guilty to federal charges of recording and distributing videos depicting situations that included compromising sexual exploitation of children. As part of his plea agreement, the uh, charge of visual exploitation of a child under 12 was admit, uh, dismissed says here he wasn't in the right state of mind. He say he contracted West Nile virus in 2009 and that the virus subsequently made him sexually aggressive. <laughs> I did a little check-in. It's not one of the side effects. It isn't? Oh, really? Okay. No. Darn. No, turns out it's got nothing to do. I'm trying to, to think of like a West Nile pun or something that, that is uh, porny, but... Um... I'll take corny. Yeah, I can't come up with anything. Corny's breast okay. Nile virus. Breast Nile. Oh, breast breast Nile virus. <laughs> uh, Maybe I caught the breast Nile virus. How about penile virus? <laughs> there you go. Uh, anyway, John Calhoun. Hey, Jay Calhoun. Somebody in the chat here. Uh, the attorney who represented him said. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Jay Calhoun. Wow, look at you. Uh, let's see. He tried to get him a, a maximum five-year sentence. Here's what he said. This is what the lawyer actually said. It wasn't him who did it. He didn't ask for West Nile. Because of the mental and emotional conditions of Mr. Marquez, he deserves a variance of the 20 years. The government is asking for up to 20. We are asking for five, an extensive supervised release. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I know defense mm -hmm. attorneys have to defend their clients, but dude. Yeah. Yeah. It takes two seconds to find out whether or not West Nile virus does anything to your brain to make you sexually aggressive or not. Right. Yeah. It. it uh, I like just like the fact that they're sitting in the conference room at some point saying, "Oh, you know what to do? Let's use the let's use the uh, the West Nile virus defense." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Gets you out every time. Yeah. Um. Finally, if you've got three billion dollars to lose, I got a great new way to lose it. Oh, cool. Here's how you do it. Uh, if you want to sink a three billion dollar submarine, just yeah. forget to close the hatch. Oops. Yeah, I'll get you every time. Uh, Airy Hent is the most important platform within India's nuclear 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 <laughs> triad covering <laughs> land, air, sea modes. The Hindu reports 
The Hindu is not a guy. It is a paper. It's a newspaper, yes. The National <laughs> Hindu. <laughs> uh, anyway, the modern, uh, they have this modern submarine. It's beautiful, actually, looking. Uh, I saw some pictures of it. It's not a simple machine. A loss of propulsion, unexpected flooding, or trouble with reactors or weapons could doom a sub crew. But it's also a good idea to close the hatch before you get in there. Call it a lesson learned for the Indian Navy, which managed to put the country's first nuclear missile submarine, the 2.9 billion INS Arahant, out of commission in the most uh, boneheaded way possible. The Hindu reported yesterday that it had been out of commission since suffering major damage some 10 months ago due to what the Navy source characterized as human error. Turned out to be they allowed water to flood to the sub's uh, propulsion compartment after failing to secure one of the vessel's external hatches. Like literally shut the door on your way in or you're going <laughs> to gonna flood the joint. Uh, water rushed into the hatch and the rear side was left open by mistake. Uh, let's see. The Hindu reports since then the sub has been undergoing repairs and cleanup according to the paper. Besides other repair, many pipes had to be cut open and replaced. Many pipes cut open and replaced. Yeah. I many. don't know how you take a bucket down there and you start dumping the bucket, you know, emptying the... Uh... Uh, the thing to get get that thing back up and uh, and, and floating, what floatable. Do you, what do you do to the guy that did it? Like the guy in charge of the hatch. What do you do to him? Do you just? Ironically, it was Richard Hatch, which, oh, which I think oh. is just uh, mind blowing. The fact that uh, which one, actor or guy? What? Well, uh, there's only one living still, right? Didn't uh, the Battlestar Galactic Richard Hatch pass away a couple did. years ago? Yeah, he died. Yeah. So all we got left is the... Zorak or Zarek. What was he on the re the new? Um, Galactica. Z- like he was. Uh, it was a name like that, wasn't it? Something z- like that. Yeah. He was a senator, or uh, sorry, yep. one of the quorum of the uh, thing there. I forgot mm-hmm. his name. I can't remember it either. Yeah, it was Zarek. Okay, Zarek. Or Zarek. Yeah. Yeah. He was great in that. He was great. Yeah. Yes. I like that. So it'd have to be the uh, survivor OG winner, <laughs> naked, naked uh, uh, survivor contestant Richard Hatch. Perfect. Who accidentally left the hatch open. Can't wait. And you, then again, two things you don't want to leave leave open: your submarine hatch or your Richard hatch. Yeah, never leave your Richard hatch open. It's good Ooh, advice. No. Here's some other good advice: take a break when you can and play a song when you can. Well, we're gonna follow that advice right now and play one. Brian, do you have a song? I do. Let's go to Iowa. You know, the far reaches of Iowa for this uh, <laughs> wow. Indian in the middle. Uh, this is a brand new album that's going to be coming out June 14th. Big thanks to Marathon Artists and Publishing for uh, sending this over. Uh, you know, people love uh, Tuesdays on TMS because they get a uh, little Justin Robert Young, a little jury, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to give you Max Jury. That's this guy's name, Max Jury. Uh, so even more jury than you get on a, on a Tuesday, you get max jury today. Uh, his second album is coming out is called modern world. This is the title track from that album. It is modern world. Here is max jury. I don't know what to do with my life. I'm going to sing a song to my life. I'm here to say. You can't treat us like that, Sam. It ain't right. We got our work to do. Money is honey. This is the Morning Stream. All right, we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Going to answer some of your questions here real quick. I put out a call on the uh, Twitter to ask for some Ask TMS questions. Because why not? And then we'll get Daryl in here and he can tell us about some hot Trek news he's got burning under his skin. Yeah, I was excited to see part of this. I, I saw it in the uh, Hollywood Reporter this morning and I was really uh, happy to see it. So, yep, we'll get to that in uh, in a minute. Me, and, me as well. All right, Rishi B, we know him. He says, we do. Yeah, he's cool. We like that guy. He says this. <laughs> What's the album art for the Scott and Brian band first album? So what do we use for Ooh. album art for let's assume you and I had musical talent outside of Coverville. <laughs> yes, it would uh it would be uh the two of us um standing in the great plains of uh, uh Green River <laughs> Utah, Colorado, <laughs> performing our like a live shot of us performing our uh, our concert. <laughs> yeah, a little Vegas yeah. roll off to the side, it's just sitting right. on a plate exactly. ready to be eaten. Sure. 
Uh, also, on the back, it'll be Eddie the Beast uh, eating a sandwich. I think that'd be pretty Eddie cool. Eddie the Beast? Eddie from, uh, from uh, Iron Maiden? Yeah, we'd borrow him from Iron Maiden. They're not doing anything with him. No, no, they're not using him currently. Not is he right on now. the... Is, do, do they put him on the side of the uh, the planes that... Um, What's-his-face flies? Uh, oh, I don't know. I keep wanting to say Joe Elliott, but it, uh, Joe Elliott was uh, Def Leppard. Right. And, not the singer, uh, the other guy. Right? Are we talking about the singer or somebody else in the band? We're talking about... Well, we're, yeah, the the singer, the the lead singer of Iron Maiden is a pilot. Oh no no no! I take that back. Joe Elliott from Def Leppard is the pilot, not the guy from. Oh. Or am I completely confusing Iron Maiden and Def Leppard's lead singers? One of their lead singers is a pilot. Who sings? And for I Iron think Maiden? it's yeah, Bruce Dickinson. Bruce Dickinson is uh, is a pilot. Bruce Dickinson, lead singer of Iron Maiden. I did not so know I'm that. So if they put if they put Eddie on the side of the plane, like printed on the side of the plane. I would have had no idea about that. That's pretty cool. Oh, these guys are old now. <laughs> I was just looking at a picture well, yeah. of Iron Maiden and realized they had uh, aged so quickly. But anyway, let's see here. Oh, yeah, he's 60 yeah, so years Ed old. Ed Force One. So the Ed Force One plane has the Iron Maiden logo on the side. Yeah, but not but Eddie. I don't, see, I don't see Eddie on there. You'd put Eddie on the tail, right? Like a Frontier flight. <laughs> oh, Eddie the Beast is the coolest dude. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Dickinson in full flight suit while filming... Mm-hmm. Flying heavy metal, some kind of documentary. Oh, there it is, Eddie the Beast on the on the tail. Oh, do they have him on the tail? Yeah, I'll send you I'll send you this image. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Is it the one of yeah where he's like holding his hands out? Uh, let's see. No, it's more like uh, it's just his head. And then it says the book of Saul. Oh, it's a tour plane. I guess he flew it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah yeah. I used to love All right, those good. guys. Run Good. To the uh, hill. Uh, as long as they've got Eddie on the on the plane, then I'm then I'm fine with that. Here, chat. I'll show you on my screen. Here you go. See, look at that. That's pretty cool. I mean, that would just scare you if you're in like a regular Delta plane and that comes ripping by. Mm-hmm. Whew. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, bring uh, bring your plugs on that flight. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Here's one from uh, Jack Fox who says, "What indie game that isn't on the Switch?" Uh, would you like to see put on the Switch? And he says, I would like to see Slay the Spire on the Switch. Uh, indie game that's not on the Switch. God, that's a really good question. I haven't been playing, I haven't played too many. What's crazy is there's a billion indie games on the Switch, so it's, it's not yeah. like it's a platform that's bereft of indie games. City Skylines is the first one that, <clears throat> that comes to mind for me because I'd like to have the ability to play that portable, uh, portably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as well as plugging into a TV and playing it that way. And because you've got a touch screen, you can do that whole like going over to this area and, and plopping a new uh, residential area or going over here. It's like City Skylines is the way better. Is it, is it, it's already on there. You I just have, sent me a I have good news for you. It is literally <laughs> now on the Switch. Yep. That's great. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah. $39.99 for that thing. That's an interesting. I wonder cool. how that port. I'm sure that's pretty good. I don't think they use the, sc- the uh, touch screen for it, but. That's a great game. Mm-hmm. Mm, making me want to get HD it. Using HD Rumble, a Rumble effect helps helps find the most efficient area to place service buildings in your city. That's cool. Yeah, because it can do. All right, I think I'm picking that up. It's a bummer because I've already bought it on Steam and got a whole, uh, you know, got a couple of the DLC. But I think I might buy it again just for the Switch, just right. because. Right, but right, that right. is a good question. How well does it play? Especially if they're not using the. Um, the touchscreen feature. There's probably some review mm-hmm. here we could find. Let's just see what the general. Bill would know, right? Wouldn't Bill know? I don't know. Would Bill know? Bill from uh, you oh, know Run uh, Jump Stomp. Oh, who I thought you meant Bill. Bill. Yeah, I thought you meant our. Not our, not bill. our bill. Not our Bill. Not yeah. our. Uh, our other Bill. Oh, yeah. We'll say it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. City Skylines, Nintendo Switch Edition. Currently enjoying. Eh, it's not bad. Around seventy percent average. They say it's just uh, the the complaints about it on here. It seems like it's just hard. It's just a it's more of a mouse and keyboard game, so a little hard to map to control. But uh, yeah, still, if you want to get it on the road, there you go. Uh, all right, how about this one? Uh, this is I the bloke who says, "What question won't you answer?" Hmm. This one. Next one. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was the one. That was it. That was the one. Yeah. I don't know if there's a question I wouldn't answer. I'm sure there's something. How often do you and your wife do it? How often do you manage it? 
Um, Your wife does she go? Does she go? Nudge, nudge, grin, grin, wink, wink. Know what I mean? <laughs> that is the that is the uh, question we won't answer. Yeah, we won't answer that one, I guess. Uh, and then finally, Genie says, "Not our Genie, different Genie." Says, "What are your, or sir? What are the points in? Uh, I assume in your point system for six parking lot tacos." <laughs> For the record, it was five. It was look. always five, but for some reason, people say six, and I don't know why. But it was five tacos. I had. I'm going to come clean. This uh, this last weekend, I was running out grabbing a couple things. I made uh, Tina stuffed French toast for Mother's Day, and I mm. needed to go get some brioche uh, bread. While I was in the while I was in the bakery section, I grabbed an eclair and ate it uh, in the in the parking lot as I was driving back home. I'm like, I'm totally eating this. Totally eating an, an eclair. What's the points on an I, eclair? Are they high? Oh man, it's got to be. Yeah, uh, because uh, it's got custard in the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's like it was. It had to be twenty points at the. Oh. Sixteen points for an eclair. You know what? That's not. That's totally not. Not bad. That's more than a cheeseburger, but still not bad. It's not too bad. Still not bad. Uh, so a Taco Bell, just a plain taco, right? Yeah, regular old taco. Well, soft taco, soft beef. Um. Here we go. Uh, oh, soft or crunchy? Soft. Soft? I always go soft. With uh, beef or uh, chicken? Beef. Uh, okay, here we go. Six points for one Taco Bell soft taco. So, so 30 points for five of those. Jeez. And, and what's that your... would be more than my, that would be more than I don't, oh no, that's that's just under what I'm allowed every day. Per day, right? Per day, yes. <laughs> I get 36 every day. Man. What, what could you do with six points? So you could do all those five tacos, and then what's left? Uh, ten points. You'd basically got to do salads. Yeah. Uh, you, you'd spend your points on dressing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, eggs. Eggs. Dressing and eggs. eggs. All right. Dressing and eggs. Yeah. Well, hopefully that. I did. You know, we never yeah. did. We since we didn't do a show on Friday. I had my way on Friday morning, and uh, down, only down two tenths of a pound. But I like seeing the needle move that direction. It's better to go down than up. Better to go down than up. Yep. It's totally true. Uh, right. On that note, Daryl time. Yeah. Let's give him a call. He'll be home. He's not at work. He's no, home I'm instead. Not. Oh, how, what happened? There were technical <laughs> issues at work or something? What's going on? Yes, that would be correct. What, what, what kind of deal? What happened? What kind of horrible thing happened? Um. Well, stuff there isn't working, so people got sent home. Oh, well, that's no good. Well, here's your theme. It's all mushy and wet. There you go. It's Daryl Skills, everybody. Spilled a, uh, a pumpkin spice latte on the office router. <laughs> Blew it out. So did you? do you just tell the office, ah, oh, no wife, I'm going home. See ya. Uh, pretty much. Yeah? Cool. Well, that's nice. Cool. I don't have that option. I have to, like, scramble and freak out if I don't have internet. So you're, you're lucky. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Daryl's here. We're going to talk about Star Trek things yes. and uh, Star Trek related things. For example, uh, there's news out that uh, the Orville's getting a season three. I guess that's good if you're watching the Orville and liking it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It gets better and better. Yeah. Guess it who's... does. I like the the season finale. Won't say anything, but I do like the fact uh, the fact that they they do something that I always worry about. And but they have ramifications for doing it, and I like that. Like it's not just a, we solved every problem this way, but there are ramifications involved. I like that. All right, I need to just watch the damn show. What's my you problem? You do need to watch the damn show. Have you? Are you still? Uh, you're still in first season, right? Yeah, I still haven't gone past episode one or whatever I ended on. So I think at just... this point you probably got to watch episode one again just to, uh, uh, just to to re get that initial story set up. Do you think by binging it, it by binging it am I going to be super noticing like the the change from comedy to more pure trek because that's what everyone tells me. Like by the time you get to season 2 things are things are a little more trekish I, and I felt like they had made that switch really early on in season 1. Like I felt like like your pilot had a little bit more of the Seth MacFarlane style mm-hmm. family guy comedy. But by episode two and three, that stuff was already starting to disappear. All right. I'm going to watch yeah. it. Finally, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Beyond that, do we know anything else about it, Daryl? Anything else happening with the Orville that you want to mention? Uh, not by, but that's all I know is all it's right. renewed, and that's the big news. All right. Well, good yeah. news, everybody. The Orville, season three. Uh, also, Lower Decks held the first table read May 7th. 
Lower Decks mm -hmm. is, uh, remind me, what is that? Is that, that the, is animated? the animated comedy from the uh, Rick and Morty guy. Oh, from, what's his name? Michael something. No. I think. No. Is that not it? No. It's Justin Roiland. That's it. Justin Roiland. No, yeah. no, it's not him. Oh, well, then it's Dan I, I would know it. It's, it's, it's the guy that does the season eight TNG stuff on Twitter. Oh, well, that's a different. He's not one of the creators then because it's Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland who created Rick and Morty. I don't know. Who oh, that no, guy not is. the creator. He's a writer on Rick and Morty. Oh, OK. All right. All right. No, no, no. I think I knew that. And now that you say it, it's it's coming back to me. It wasn't one of those two guys. All right. Then that's yeah. co that's cool. So they've done their first table read, which means it's cast and they're ready and they're going. Yeah. I didn't know they were that's that cool. far, but that's great. Show will be ready in 2021 or 2022. Well, that's a big difference to say. Yeah, yeah the table read, well, they've got a lot of animation to do, but that seems like such a long time <laughs> if they're already doing oh, the. We'll have the, the Picard read. show before then, though. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> but different networks, right? They could do them simultaneously. It'd be all right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this isn't this isn't CBS All Access. This is going to be on a different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Yeah, Nickelodeon. That's right. Or, or, or wait, there's two animated things. Now I'm starting to get them confused. There's the kids show that's on Nickelodeon. I think this animated series is still on all access oh is it also a, co a comedy this lower decks thing yeah okay so wait both the one for kids is it more adventure or is it just straight up funny like that seems weird and redundant they're gonna have two animated comedy trek shows isn't that weird well the uh, the nickelodeon one i think is just kids stuff yeah. it may not be as com comedic but more yeah. like uh your typical kids show kind of comedy all right Sign me up. Yeah. I'm ready. I'll watch and all this. And one more thing on the Picard show. Uh, outside of the U.S. and Canada, it's going to be on Amazon Prime, which mm. is different now. Mm. Oh, oh. It was on... Oh, right, because uh, it was on Netflix outside right. of the U.S. Oh, and Canada. That's right. weird. How did they work that deal out? That's weird. Isn't it weird? A little bit, yeah. I don't Jeff understand. Bezos is a big Trek fan, so maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, he loves Star Trek, especially the episodes where they take pictures of each other's junk and then text it to each other. <laughs> uh, Worst episode ever. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'm I'm in on all this stuff. That sounds great. I don't really want to wait till 2022, but I guess if I have to, it'll be fine. Yeah, uh, better to do a good job on it than put out garbage. Yeah, uh, and any no word on Discovery Season 3 in terms of major casting or anything weird it's all we're, we're still basking in the glow of that finale i guess yeah they're working on it yeah but you, uh they're not filming it yet they're doing scripts and that kind of thing i have an idea you ready for this here's my idea uh you get captain archer who's really old now right so you get scott bacula back mm -hmm. and somehow through some kind of weird time warp him captain lorca the good Lorca, okay, uh -huh. and Captain Great. Pike all get stuck together on a little ship, and we and we have adventures with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all for any way to bring uh, Anson uh, uh, Anson Scott. Is Mount, that it? Mount. Anson Mount. Mount. Not Williams. Um, I just didn't want to say Anson Williams. That's the only one I knew not to say. Um, uh, but it'd be great to have him on anything because he's great. But uh... he is. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see them all the ones we really love, like Anson Mount and the the Klingon lady. I'd like to see them do different characters so, in makeup, so we don't know who they are. Oh, that'd be all right. Hmm. They do that sometimes in Star Trek, don't they? Mm -hmm. Someone will show up and you'll be like, "Oh, wait a minute, who's that guy?" It's like that. Yeah, they they killed off one character and then had the person play them come back and replace themselves. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got some Star Trek news of my own. Uh, Amarin Shimmerman, however you say his name, mm -hmm. Quark mm -hmm. from DS9, is um, joining the... Uh, so so the Utah Shakespeare Festival is actually... It sounds dumb because people don't think of us as like Shakespeare here or whatever, but it's actually huge, and it's in Cedar City, which is like halfway between here and Vegas, and um, they for like two weeks, that whole place just becomes Shakespeare Central. And he's gonna play. Oh, I forgot. His Twitter says who's he gonna be. His, he's in Othello or something, mm. or maybe it's King Lear. I don't remember. But uh, Star Trek's Quark is gonna be on stage at the Utah Shakespeare Festival. That's cool. Yeah, if you're oh, into that. That should be fun. Yeah, I'm sure he'll 
earn all kinds of gold press latinum for his work. You know, uh, Iago sounds like it could be a uh, Ferengi name. So let's say he's going to be in Othello and he's going to play Iago. Oh, Iago totally does. You're right about that. Yeah. The whole yeah. episode on that where uh, uh, Commander <laughs> Commander Baldhead, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? Cisco. Cisco, Commander oh, Cisco. Cisco. Okay, yeah. yeah, they find a they find a big eared refugee who needs help, and then Quark puts him in the thing, and da da da. There's your episode. Wee, Daryl. It's been a real pleasure having you on today. Why? Uh, thank you. Uh, anything else you want to mention? I guess the the star uh, your Star Trek show is still going strong. Now that Discovery's over, what are you guys doing week to week? We're still doing the old stuff. Mm-hmm. Anything in particular that's uh, jumping out? I've been following Michael Gaines' uh, Twitter activity, and he seems to be talking a lot about TOS stuff, so I assume it's all TOS all the time right now. It feels like Oh, it. no, we're doing everything. TOS, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, all of it. Yeah. Voyager? You into Voyager? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven of nine. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty lady. Pretty, pretty lady. All right, Daryl Skills is, of course, at This Week in Trek at thisweekintrek.com and the Trek Nerd on Twitter. Follow him there. Daryl, stay out of trouble. We'll see you later. Ga, ga, ga. See you Prosper. Oh, I forgot to... <laughs> I never showed... Uh, he had video, and I should have shown it. Oh. That's okay. Oh, right, because he was in Skype. Yeah, he was definitely in Skype. All right, uh, quick mashup, and then we will get the H out. Uh... Actually, I didn't even check to see if we have one, do we? Oh, yeah, we totally There do. is one, yep. Yeah, there totally is. In fact, this one's called Monday Mashup Whackin' for Mother... Uh, sorry, Whackin' for Mother Nature. <laughs> oh, God. This okay. is concerning a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to play it, and we'll see what happens. Here you go. Hi, I am on show. I am on show now. I am Kitty I am on, show. on show. I am on show. Hello. Well, welcome to Kitty Show. This is me. I now perform Kitty Face. <laughs> <laughs> Had no, those. Huh? It's called no. it's, uh, C Carrillo, Chichillo, Cropachicho. Yeah, I don't know the name of it. Sure, it's exactly that. Yes. So I said that Mayo. sounds great. There you go. Mayo. 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 <laughs> Bless my sacred body against these vermin. He's the best. Oh, oh it's totally from the Bigfoot. Somebody sure. farts on the train. You're breathing in his bum. Oh, it's a lovely. I haven't had a cookie in ages, right? <laughs> Hedgehog porn. Oh, fantastic. Lot, very popular right now, except all the teeth. Yeah, that's true. Oof. <sighs> okay, time to take a shower. And they said not she to be... She pulled a big, hard crock out of her pants. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big, hard, throbbing crock. <laughs> I regret nothing. What happened? Oh, my third nipple sprung a leak, and now there's purple blood everywhere. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, I'm not a loud a-hole. <laughs> if we take care of ourselves... Yeah, you put yourself in a good place physically, you might be just fine. Oh, man, that freaking slap did it again. <laughs> Oh, you're really pretty. <laughs> I didn't realize we'd be dating. <laughs> I hate that laugh so bad. Let me go smoke a bog. <laughs> Don't need the snow anymore. Is that how that song goes? No, that's not how it works. All let right. it go, let it go. Don't need the snow anymore. <laughs> let it go, let it go. My uh, favorite Simpsons character is Mo. <laughs> and I like Margaret Cho. <laughs> That was the same exact thing you told me about the time you were whacking it. Exact same right, terms. Right, right. Yeah, I got a goal. I, I got a goal. I has, you know. <laughs> I may not be helping the world, but it feels good. That's what you told me. It feels good to me. Yeah. So. I'm helping the world just one. I'm not even going to finish this. Uh, <laughs> not even going to finish this. Uh, nice. Nice. It's good to get done away in there as well. It is. I like your uh, other voices on here. Yeah, we get those once are, in a while. Are, are regulars. Nice. Thank you, uh, Jamie. TMS Mashups on Twitter and at patreon.com slash TMS Mashups for his fine work. Brian, you're guessing Jamie on also another... A oh, really go good, uh, uh, Jamie also a really, really good contributor for, for great questions on Babel Royale. I wanted to throw that out there, too. Well, yeah, he's awesome. He's come up with some great ones. Guys into uh, it. Yeah, I'm going to be on uh, Cord Killers Day, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, talking with uh, Schwood and Merritt on, uh, on talking about cutting cords. I'm going to cut like 11 of them while I'm on the show. I don't know which ones I'll find, like a couple power cords. And I'm going to bring in a pregnant lady and cut the umbilical cord after she gives birth. Perfect. Um, you know, it's uh, no promises, but those are cords I will I will cut on cord cutters. You got to cut those cord, cord killers. killers. Cord yeah, you got to kill them. Killers today. Yeah. <laughs> got to get a kill them cords and cut them. Why not? Oh, now I have to kill them? Yeah. I was just planning on cutting them. Now I've got to kill them? <laughs> 
That's actually oh, a really fun man. show to be on. So uh, people check that out. That'll be tonight. Was it five? You say our time? Something five like that. Five Mountain Time. Yeah. And they stream it over at uh, Seven Eastern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good show. Uh, so good to check that out. In the meantime, uh, right after this, or about uh, 45 minutes from now, I will be doing uh, the Skim Show with Kim. So that's now on Mondays after TMS each and every week. We'll be doing that here shortly. So stick around for that. If you so desire, there will be no Boop Show today without Dunaway. Uh, I may squeeze in a game stream or something during that slot. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, his last minute outage means that we're not going to be able to do that today. Normal schedule all week, though, for most everything else, so stick around. Oh, well, that's another thing I'll talk about tomorrow. All right, uh, patreon.com slash TMS is how you support us. Please do. We need it. It's how we survive. And if you're looking for anything else, including that, over at our website, you can find it at frogpants.com slash TMS. All right, play us a song. What do you got? I have a request that came in from Jonathan Torregano. I'm sure he really rolls that art. Torregano. Mm. He says, uh, hey, Sarfang and Blaine Bloodhoof, or Bane Bloodhoof. Blaine? Bane. It's not a Should Warcraft name. That's a major appliance. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to TMS since around 2014, 2015, and I feel like now is the best time to make a request. I'm finally graduating from college on May 18th. It's been a long road to get here, but I kept telling myself it's not a race. It's a marathon. <laughs> and at 26, I don't think I'm too late to the finish line. Thanks for all the shows and looking forward to more. I'll leave this momentous occasion song choice in your hands. Thanks. Love the show, though, Jonathan. Mm. Also, is it too early to get a fish sandwich or perhaps to test the ship's phasers? Oh, man. Let's test the fish, ship's phasers. That's my favorite. Let's test the ship's phasers. Yeah. Mm. That's right. Mm. It's good stuff. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, he actually said anything that's sort of power ballady that the cover master deems appropriate, maybe Journey or Bon Jovi. Well, once you said Journey, I knew uh, that that's where the, the direction I was going to go. Um, Anthrax in 2013 released an album called Anthems, which was one of their uh, it was their cover album. Uh, really, really good cover album by Anthrax, including this song here by Journey. Not one of the ones usually here getting covered. Not a Separate Ways or a Don't Stop Believing or an Open Arms. Nope, they go a little bit deeper with this cut. Keep on running. Here is Anthrax covering Journey. I don't know oh, what to do. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Chuck Testa. Chuck Testa. Been a while. I haven't uh, heard from Chuck Testa. I wonder if he's.